Welcome to Inside Out. I'm Haley Gross, a women's rights activist that plans to motivate young women to excel. I am a rising filmmaker and lover of music. Inside Out details fashion trends, music, social media, current events, and more. Explore my college years with me as I balance a social life, career, relationships, and mental health. Welcome back to another Tuesday episode of Inside Out. I'm your host, Haley, and today I figured it's so rainy outside. All we're doing is staying inside. So I wanted to talk about space, um, specifically spaces that we sleep in, we study in, also known as personal rooms or living rooms, just rooms, in houses, in apartments. Um, Trying to discuss this today because one of the big things that I'm struggling with right now is having to get everything together to do a big move back to Orlando to go live in an apartment with some of my friends. Um, for my sophomore year of college, which is going to be awesome and totally super cool because we found a really nice place. Um, Rent is not cheap, but I think it's worth it because the space is going to be completely so much better than living in a dorm and living with people. I had never met before and just trying to keep peace. Um, One of the things I hated about, I feel like I talk about hating my dorm so much, but it's true, it's so bad. But one of the things like I hated the most about living in my dorm with these girls that I didn't know that were pretty disrespectful to me was that I couldn't study in my room. I'm okay with uh, like noise. I've always been a person that's been able to like read through noise. Sleeping is another story, definitely, but reading, doing work through noise, like that's always fine. I can always go study in like a food court or like somewhere like that. But I don't know why it was just having the noise be something that I couldn't see. It was, not, it was always on the other side of the wall and there was screaming. There was no like warning signals for the screaming and the loud music playing and stuff like that. So I just felt very isolated and wanting to leave my dorm all the time so that I could go do my tasks, go study, read anything, read my books that I needed for class. So. I am so excited because I love Orlando and I really love it there and I want to go back but I just hated where I was living and I found myself running away to my boyfriend's like almost every night so I could go I did my homework there I went to do my homework there um, I went to go sleep there like all the time and I just think that's so bad because I my we were paying for like the storm place and Obviously, we knew it wasn't going to be the most grand spectacular, but it sucks that my like housing people couldn't help me out with my noise problem and the fact that I was unhappy living somewhere that I was paying for. Um, I know everyone has that problem. There's a big trend on TikTok that's like talking about your freshman year roommate and how awful they were. And I'm gonna like, okay, like everyone's been through it, everyone did it. But it just sucks that I wanted to go to housing and be like, hey, please stop. And I went to my RA and I did all this stuff just for nothing to happen. My mom, my uh, roommate, Alyssa, that I lived in the room with, we wrote like a million emails to housing. My mom did. Her stepdad called and my mom called and it was 
all very dramatic, all very dramatic. But it accomplished nothing. Like, what was it for? But anyways, back to our central topic. I am buying a lot of stuff now recently to move into this apartment. Uh, luckily, my roommate Molly, she covered her parents, very grateful for this. They covered pots and pans. They covered most of our kitchen wares also. Ended up buying like a little rice cooker, pink rice cooker, shout out Brie. Shout out Brie for that rice cooker. But, <laughs> um, so I got a rice cooker. I went to Ikea on Saturday with my mom. And me and my mom, we just love buying stuff. Like housewares, like I didn't know, like this is opening like a whole new realm of me buying random stuff that I don't need. So I'm getting the cups, I'm getting the plates. They have such cute stuff at Ikea. I bought like a bottle. My mom was like, oh, you can put oil in it. I was like, I'm not putting, and this is just gonna sit somewhere in the kitchen probably. I'm not, I'm not. this is a de decoration essentially. But yeah, so I just bought a lot of kitchenwares that I don't need. I already have some stuff from when I was living in the dorm. I have some silverware. That's honestly not good because it was like an $11 pack from Ikea. But thank God uh, our kitchenwares are kind of taken care of. I'm going to get some pots and pans. But the thing about me is that I can't go just get like, go to Target and get the regular pan. Like, I want my stuff to be really cute. Like, I want it all to be cute. And if I need something for a practical reason, I will go online and try to find a cute version of this practical item that I need. I need a toilet bowl brush, but the ones at Ikea were so but ugly, I could not have those in my bathroom. So I just decided that I will continue looking on Amazon and all that kind of stuff. But pretty much, I wanted to show a few little pictures of my inspo, living room inspo, uh, room for the most part inspo storage inspo oh I'm over here um, so I thought this was super cute I like the little green rug down there and then they have like this canopy thing I doubt I'll be able to like uh, execute that but I think it's super cute I wanted to get this little thingy this little thingy right here but they don't sell it at Ikea anymore so I'm gonna find another type of little storage thing. But I really like this one too. This is more simple. It's probably more what I will see. I think it gives like a little kind of like Southwest kind of vibe with the pinks and the bamboo and the little cactus over there. I thought that was really super cute. And the little lights on the back too, a candle. I'm mostly just looking at this stuff for furniture. Um, but look at these mushrooms, look at this mushroom room. Like this is incredible, this living room. Um, I have no idea what we're actually doing for our living room. We made like a huge Google Doc and we're all throwing stuff in it. But I think the only thing we've bought in so far is a rug. And I went and I got a little doormat for us cause I didn't know if somebody else was gonna buy a doormat, but. Yeah, this is super cute. This is super cute, the little mushroom room. And this one I really, really liked. I love this really long um, velvet, I think it is, couch with a bunch of assorted pillows. My style is kind of more like just random stuff and somehow it's gonna go together and somehow it's gonna look cool. It's not necessarily gonna look nice and put together, but it is gonna look cool and it is gonna be an expression of me and an expression of things I like. I love posters, I love movies, I love music and all that kind of stuff. And I love to have like those kind of things represented in a place that I'm living in. But this is super cute. I love the plant little thing. That's a super cute desk. I think it's also from Ikea because it has those drawers, but I think I get a desk with my room, so 
I'm definitely going to give a cute little update on my room when I get back to Orlando because I will still be doing the podcast again just like I did over the course of last the last two semesters season one of Inside Out but yeah I really like this um, the kind of painting arrangements I there's a lot of people on TikTok that do the um, framed just random thrifted paintings that are kind of like more light in color, more pastel. Maybe the color has drained from them in time of them living at that thrift store or just from use of being in somebody's house. But yeah, I think that's a really cool little thing that people are starting to do now. And I want to do that over my bed, I think. I think that's going to be super cute. But it will definitely give an update, a little vlog with my little room when I get to college, which is in about two, three-ish weeks. Um, I'm cutting it close, so I am very excited to go on to that next stage of my life and share that with you all. Um, so I actually looked up why having a more clean and catered to you room is actually beneficial to your health, your focus, your learning, um, there's a bunch of different stuff that actually is dependent on how you keep the space that you live in and how you sleep and all that kind of stuff. So uh, essentially, I have watched enough hoarders to know that the way your house looks is how you are going to look, feel, uh, be, and pretty much just want to live in your house and be proud of your house and your home. Um, if you haven't watched Hoarders, it's basically the show about how these people hoard a million things in their home and one day they finally realize, oh my God, this is crazy. I can't walk in my own house. I can't walk around here. And so I am so messy. Like I am super messy. Um, not necessarily with like food and like cups and stuff like that, but my clothes are thrown all around my room. And there are very specific times when I will clean my room and that is when I have a guest coming over uh, most of the time unless I have one of those days where I'm like all right I'm gonna make my bed I'm gonna clean up like this is gonna be a great night's sleep because I don't know why I just feel better in my room when it's clean uh, I feel like I have my life put together a little bit more uh, but I usually clean my room when my friends come over uh, but then my friends will leave and I'll have a nice like cute room to go sleep in. So I kind of love that about myself where I just don't want other people to think I'm gross. So I'm gonna clean up. <laughs> if there's anything I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up before somebody comes over to my house, whether it's my grandparents, my boyfriend, or any of my friends. But apparently when you create a space for yourself designed to cater to a certain activity, you will excel better and keep better focus. Um, from online, the internet tells me that you will see yourself getting more done in time. Uh, during COVID, a lot of people were pretty much forced into working from home and having a home office and figuring out how to separate home, which is relax, from office, which is work and which is stress out. Uh, and so I got to see my mother build this home office to, my mom spends no time in her room 
ever. Like, she really never has. She spends time on the couch, and then she'll be in that office. And then her bedroom is pretty much only designed for get dressed, get ready, go to sleep. For me, I spend most of my time in my room, which is why I think that my room does get messy, way messier than hers is able to. Um, but yeah, uh, when you're able to create that kind of space that totally separates your relaxation from your work, uh, she got two monitors so she could see what she was doing at all times drag documents up there and just pretty much do everything she was doing at the office at home and she's continued to work from home because she did like the environment that she created for herself better than the office environment and I don't blame her. I like working from home too but um, for me um, having a desk in my room is just for makeup and maybe write a little note here and there, maybe do a craft. I sew, so I, sometimes I put my little sewing machine up there, but it's really not often that I will sit there and do homework. I do homework in my bed, I work on editing in my bed. Um, I just like reclining. I really don't know why I'm such a like recliner when I want to go work on something. I don't know if I get more done when I'm sitting in my bed. I might get less done because I'm more inclined to using my phone. So I think that maybe I might even try to start using my desk as a place where I'm actively working on stuff for my job here and stuff for college as well so but throwback honestly to covid times when i was forced to sit at this desk my makeup my makeup desk because i really don't use it for anything else but i was forced to sit at my desk during classes when i was a senior and junior in high school because the teachers could actually kick you out of class if you were laying down in your bed. And honestly, I think this made me a little bit more productive because the teachers that didn't really care, um, I would fall asleep in their class. Like my film teacher passed out. It was 7 a.m., I was passed out. He's calling my name, my camera's the only one still on. He knows I'm asleep, he's texting me, but I'm glad that could not happen in, say, like an AP class or something like that, where they could very well kick you out because it's college level kind of course. But yeah, I think that um, honestly, sitting at a desk and designing your desk space for just work is way more effective than. Um, using your bed, um, sitting downstairs on your couch, doing your work, having that specific place to go work that you know the only thing you're gonna do there is work. I wouldn't choose a chair that you're gonna wanna recline in. Um, probably something comfortable though, maybe a specifically designed computer chair. But, uh, I wanted to talk about why it literally gives you better health to cater your own space to yourself and just like where you're living. Um, on the other hand, using your space for a specific purpose of relaxing or sleeping can have the opposite effect. Uh, I really don't feel like I get more done at a desk. So I feel like I've been able to merge the bridge of my desk is pretty much my bed 
and my bed is also going to be for sleeping because it's just so comfy like I just have a really comfortable mattress for some reason and I don't know I just want to recline I want to lay down if I don't have to do it at a desk I don't want to but I feel like again maybe that's why I'm not super productive uh, apparently if you make your space your own you're going to have better meal times better sleeping habits better eating habits and also a clearer mind um, I always thought what is the purpose of making your bed every day uh, there's always been a huge debate about whether it makes any difference to make your bed or not uh, and I just talked about this where I'm really only going to hyper clean my room I pick up here and there but I'm only going to hyper clean deep clean my room when I have people coming over and when uh, I know they're gonna be in my room uh, I just usually don't make my bed when I leave my house I like to have it folded and nice but generally it doesn't happen if I wake up and I slept really weird and I'm like cocooned in my covers they're gonna be to like down the side of my bed or something but generally what will happen is I will make my bed at the beginning of the week and I'll tuck it in kind of like hotel style and the way I'll get into my bed is kind of like a caterpillar so I'll just kind of stick myself into the top <laughs> trying like not to like move any of um, the sides folds that are in the bed and honestly it's comfier that way first of all and also my bed looks good for like a week probably at the end of that week it'll be destroyed but yeah that's pretty much how I live <laughs> that's how I live uh, but I also never made my bed when I was at school and I think I want to take on a new path for myself as clean, organized, very much room is catered to me and I have a desk and I do work at my desk and I only sleep in my bed and watch TV and I don't do work in my bed because that's for the desk. And even if I'm really, really, really tired, I'm still going to sit at my desk and do my work, my schoolwork. And honestly, I'm not too mad about that idea because I actually am going to be able to do my work in my dorm. I don't think you know how infuriating it was to have to get up and go walk a mile to the library just so I'd be able to go do like a five question quiz because a lot of the time they would have you have like a camera on or something and if this whole giant party's going on in the back like I'm gonna they're gonna think I'm cheating or something like something's gonna go wrong so I just honestly think that this will probably be way better for me and apparently it'll improve my health uh, I'm going to definitely get some kind of vlog out of the way my house turns out and maybe get my roommates on here I don't know if they're up for that but maybe we will see and yeah so pretty much catering your space to yourself is very very important um, when I've come home from college and I had to come back to my room that has all of the posters ripped off the wall um, I had some vines that were coming down and I took those all off to go hang in my dorm and I had like a million posters and that wasn't my original plan to go destroy my entire like childhood bedroom but I ended up taking all those posters because I went to FedEx and they didn't I bought new posters but they didn't print them for me 
So I ended up taking all those. I brought them to school, hung them on my wall, whatever. And then took those vines too. And I also have like a bunch of CDs, like a CD wall. But I took from those CDs so I could make like a ring around this mirror that I have, or I had in my dorm. And yeah, it just feels empty. And every time I came home from a break, I wanted to go back to my cool room, even though my bed is so tiny and my desk is so cluttered and I have no room and I have this tiny little fridge. I just liked existing in a space that was perfectly catered to me. Like my mom wasn't telling me to put anything up in there specifically, like this was all me. And I'm very excited for that apartment to also be all me. But going off of me coming home and not being excited about going to sleep, it just feels, it just feels felt, it just felt vacant. And I don't ever want to be living like that again. I put some more stuff up just to fill the space a little bit, but for the most part, I do see differences in my health, my focus, my drive, um, when I'm living at home. And it has nothing to do with living at home. It just is the space that I'm in, my room. I spend a lot of time in my room. I spend most of the time in my room. So when it kind of just looks really ugly, I really don't want to have anybody over and I don't want to make a video or like, take a picture or anything like I just don't want to do the things that like I usually want to do like in my room but yeah pretty much um, that is pretty much all we have for today um, I did not write a media of the week but I am gonna give you uh, the same show that I watched last week, or that I was watching last week, which is called Solar Opposites. And an update on that is that I have been able to get through three seasons over the course of two weeks, 10 episodes each. So I'm honestly concerned for myself. And also following up on last week's episode, I watched an interview with, um, What's his name? The guy from Stranger Things that I didn't know that his name last week either. But his name's Joe and, oh, Joe Keery. Joe Keery, he has this band and it's spelled D-I-J-O and that's his band name. But as a matter of fact, the way you pronounce that band name is Joe. It's Joe. Uh, Alana didn't believe me, but it's Joe. I actually, let me find a song real quick. I'm gonna choose the first one that's in my Spotify library. And, okay, I'm not picking the first song because whatever. But I'm going to say my song of the week is called Hush by the Marias. Very cute song. My mom said it sounds like Billie Eilish, even though I don't like Billie Eilish. I was like, don't even say that. Don't even say that. Katie likes Billie Eilish. <laughs> but yes, that is my media of the week. And I'm so excited for next week because I have something even better to talk about. Just you wait. But that's so sad because it's pretty much one of the last episodes that I'm going to do in the studio before I go back to college. Um, but there's gonna be so much fun college content that I'm so excited for everyone to see. And hopefully I start up my podcast with my friend, Jack. We've been planning to do a podcast before I left for college back in, um, I think back in March we were planning this, but yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff coming this fall, hopefully. And yep, I will see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you for watching Inside Out with Haiti. Tune in next Wednesday for more talk about connecting with your inner and outer self, along with a range of other topics regarding young women and social media. 
See you next week.